Hello everyone and welcome back to another Hands Down DFS Week 1 DraftKings Breakdown video. I'm Ryan and I'm here with my good friend Scotty. And Scotty, I'm excited that football season is back. I don't know about you. Dude, the dark days of baseball are over. This is year two of Hands Down DFS. Super excited about this season. Super excited about what we got going on. Great slate to start off with. Really hate the Thursday night game, but as far as the Sunday slate, pumped about it. I mean... Honestly, I'm excited about every slate this week. It's just so good to have football back, so good to have DFS back. And, you know, we're excited to bring you guys breakdowns uh, for all 18 weeks of this season and playoffs. So a lot, a lot of football to be played. I, so. love, I love all of the cheesy, this is the biggest year yet that we've been getting so far with a lot of the NFL promotions. Like, okay, we get it. There's an extra season. We're excited about it, but... Calm down with the biggest season yet, golly. If we're going to see some record high fantasy numbers out of these guys. I'm already getting tired of it. We'll see how long that lasts, <laughs> but excited about this late well, regardless. Then let's get into it. Uh, week one, I, I think is, you know, everyone's on a level playing field right now. There's no fish, no sharks. Everyone's got 0% ROI on the NFL regular season. So, I mean, this is the time to... Get your feet wet with DFS. Get into some GPPs. You know, maybe maybe take down some big money. Uh, how are you going to tackle this slate? Just from a, you know, just from an entry perspective, what contests are you entering? Yeah, from an entry standpoint, I mean, I think the fifty fifties are the safe ones, right? And what I try to do is I like to cover however much I'm doing with the GPP with a um, with a fifty fifty, right? So if Let's say I'm doing ten dollars of GPP play. I like to do a um, ten dollar as well, fifty fifty to kind of match it, so that if I cover on the uh, on the fifty fifty, then I, I which are the easier contests. You have the GPP plays, which could are obviously more risky plays, but you can have those kind of go bigger. Um, and so that's kind of my safe way of making sure that last year, I mean, I, I ended up with a positive ROI doing that strategy of just having the 50-50 cover how much I'm doing to the GP, GPP plays. So um, that's that's what went last well, or last year well, and so I'm going to do it again this year. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that that's normally how I tackle the slate. Again, week one, I think I think I might play a little bit differently and just MME a couple contests just because I think, you know, there's some guys we don't know about. Obviously, a lot of rookies we haven't seen play in regular season yet, so I think we can take advantage of that. But, yeah, as far as... The future, I like that, kind of evening out your GPPs with cash. So, shall we get into quarterbacks and just start breaking down this slate? Let's get in it, man. So, so let's start at the top. These, just, I, I, I'm calling it the big three names of this week. Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray, Josh Allen. Uh, Russell Wilson's also above 7,000, but I think those top three guys are kind of your premier high-scoring, high-ceiling guys and just... Out of those three, where are you going? Kyler Murray all day. I mean, if you look, listen to our video earlier in the week that I put out about the matchups, and I know you even touched on it in the in the picks um, video as well, that matchup against Arizona, that's the best matchup. I, Patrick Mahomes, they have the highest point total in that game. I hate that game as a whole. Um, I think it's a huge trap game. If you're the Cleveland Browns, you have the, one of the best running uh, teams in the league. Uh, and you, with that, you have the ability to take the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hands, there's no reason you don't just run the ball every play, get three to four yards, you just grind out that clock. If it that game, if it ends as ten to seven Browns even winning it, it wouldn't surprise me. Um just because that's the strategy of beating Mahomes is don't let Mahomes have the ball. So I think that Stephen or Coach Stefanski is the coach of the year last year for a reason. Um and so I mean, he was able to take the Browns to a, a, a good team. I mean, they beat my Steelers in the playoffs, even which hurt. And so that I love uh, to stay away from the Kansas City Chiefs in this slate. Also, Josh Allen uh, going against Pittsburgh. Uh, again, Steelers fan, Pittsburgh's offense, garbage this year probably. Defense, though, really, really good still. Um, so Kyler Murray is definitely a spot that I like there. I don't hate Russell Wilson, I, again, to, in the matchups. Um, sad to see Deshaun Watson there at five, but yeah, I just, <laughs> hey. I'd say Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson are, are, are my two favorite plays. How about you? I, I 
completely on board with Kyler Murray, I think. I, I mean, you, you touched on it with Mahomes. I think that game is going to be very high-owned, but could be a scary low-scoring game, that Cleveland-Kansas City game. Whereas when you're looking at Kyler Murray, especially with... Uh, if, if we look back at how he started last season, you know, he was rushing fair, almost 10 times a game, and he was putting up big numbers on the ground. Uh, obviously, they lost Kenyon Drake, but brought in uh, James Conner, your boy from the Steelers, who... You know, we love his consistency, staying on the Mr. field, Glass. always being healthy. Yep, All, always healthy. But uh, so, so I think Kyler Murray could start the same start the same way he did last season, have a big, big rushing upside at seventy six hundred five hundred dollar discount on Mahomes. I, I I think that's the way to go if you're paying up for quarterback. But yeah, for sure. uh, there's also a few a few value options in quarterback. Uh, you know, some some guys who this will be their first year with a new team, either because of their rookie or because of their trading. Jameis Winston, Mac Jones, uh, obviously Trevor Lawrence, rookie with the Jaguars. Do you like any of those guys? I love Winston, man. Going against Green Bay, I like Green Bay's defense um, a lot. But, man, do I love Winston. He's a proven big play maker. Um, obviously, that could be for either team that he makes the big plays. But, um, yeah, I, I love that you're not – getting one of these rookies that are just you have no idea what you're going to get you, you should have a pretty good idea of what Jameis is going to give you the wide receivers that they have there aren't great but I mean if he's dunking it down to Kamara getting some big yards there at only 5200 love that price for him another guy that I really like um, is a rookie um, and that is going to be Mac Jones um, I think Mac Jones is going to be somebody who at 4400 starting off against your Dolphins Dolphins are a good team don't, don't love get me it. wrong great defense um, but man, did Mac Jones look good in the preseason? I'm buying the hype on him. I got, I got him on most of my fantasy teams, and I'm maybe I'm biased there, but he doesn't even have a picture on DraftKings. I just pulled up his his stats. It's a whole bunch of zeros. You're not seeing anything. You're not even seeing his beautiful face. But man, am I excited about Mac Jones? Well, that that makes one of us because I I'm very scared of Mac Jones. Uh, obviously, yeah, he did look great in the preseason, but. It is preseason, and I think the Dolphins have a scary defense. Obviously, as Scotty mentioned, I am biased as a Dolphins fan, but they have one of the top secondaries in the league last year, and they retained both of their corners. They brought in some help with the pass rush. Yeah, but Xavier Howard, he doesn't want to be there. He's he doesn't want to make him Patrick. He'll be a Steelers, a Steelers player in three weeks. You know, but that's only if you if you left the Dolphins under Adam Gase, you'll be a great player. But we're not under Adam Gase anymore. Neither are the Jets. You know, Sam Darnold might be a top three quarterback this year. Who knows? But <laughs> Who knows? no, I, I I think I I think the Dolphins secondary is good. I think uh, their defense as a whole is good, and I'm kind of scared to see his first game. I mean, he is so cheap at 4400, which I think also is going to bring some ownership. You know, bring some ownership there. Uh. I, I don't know. That's a scary play this week. I, and I, I think there is value at quarterback. Like, I, I do like kind of the cheaper guys. Uh, I think if you're not paying up, I, I want to look at like 5,700 and below. Starting with Joe Burrow is a guy I really like. Um, I, I, I think Minnesota is a good team and they can, you know, they have a lot of tools with Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook and Thielen, obviously. Uh, so I, I think that's going to be a pass heavy game. Uh, on the Cincinnati side, then just, I mean, scrolling down, you mentioned James Winston. I don't mind him here. Uh, if he can, it, it, I'll, I'll mention him and I'll mention Sam Darnold because I think the same thing about both of them on a new team. I think they're going to be safer with their throws. I, you know, I don't know. James Winston could throw six touchdowns, three to each team normally. I don't know if this is the game where it happens. <laughs> uh, I, I think if both of them play it safe and kind of drop it down to their Alvin Kamara and Christian McCaffrey and they're kind of reliable pass catchers chop some yards that way I think Sam Darnold James Winston those are both good plays but Mac Jones not going there yeah well we agree disagree there I like how Cam (laughs) Newton is a nice thousand dollars more expensive than Mac Jones yeah well that's just Cam Newton you know got uh also Will Fuller who but Deshaun Watson you can pair him with Will Fuller there's a couple guys who won't be playing week one um <laughs> you, you can might you might be able to make a full team out of guys who are just out with uh suspensions week one or just being cut from teams yeah and that's the thing that we right is these these prices came out a month ago and there's been a lot of news that came out since the last month and so 
that's what you want to take advantage of and taking advantage of things like Mac Wilson or Mac Wilson. Well, Mac Jones, I was looking at Zach Wilson, <laughs> Mac Jones, um, being at 4,400, that was before we knew that Cam Newton wasn't on the team. So that's a steal, right? And then Jameis right. Winston, I know you're fading Mac Jones anyway, but Jameis Winston, we didn't know he was the starter. So that's why him and Taysom Hill are both priced at 5,200. Um, and so you really want to just find the value there. Sam Darnold, I love that pick too, really. You bringing that up, I think is a great point. I love Carolina this year. Um, I loved them last year, kind of sneaky. I thought they were going to be better than they were. Now I think Sam Darnold going into that, I think is going to be a great spot for him for sure to and, finally and become that quarterback we all hoped he would be. Week one revenge game, anyone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that storyline. I, I also... Zach Wilson, don't think he'll be good week one, but I really I thought he could throw the ball well too, um, and yeah, I mean maybe just maybe he it's a prove it game. He's like, yeah, it's better that we have Zach Wilson and not Sam Darnold. So there's a lot of storylines this week. It's gonna be a fun fun week. Yeah, that'll be a sneaky fun game to watch, and I hate the Jets. So, but I'll tune into that game. Uh, we, let's move on to running backs. I think we covered covered a good ground on some quarterbacks. Uh. Christian McCaffrey, 9,500. He's back after a year plagued with injuries. Uh, his price tag is still as expensive as we expect it. I mean, that 9,500 might even be a discount on what we were seeing him at last year. I think he reached 10K a couple weeks. So it, are, are you going to pay that big price tag for a guy who, you know, questions out on if he can stay healthy? So, I mean, obviously the question's out on if he can stay healthy. So when you go week by week, that doesn't matter as much, right? I mean... Obviously, he's trying to stay cool. You chalk that up. That just that's just bad luck. But I mean, we're not asking him if you're putting him on your team this week. You're not asking him to stay healthy for the entire year. So, I think what I don't like about McCaffrey and where I'm probably going to lean away from him is there's so much unknown. Right, new quarterback coming into the system. Um, the system is still the same as it was last year under Joe Brady, but we don't know. Are they going to rush McCaffrey back in? Are they going to try to use him as much are they now that they have a quarterback who they might be confident in are they going to try to be throwing the ball more and not just dumping it off to him every time so i think i'm in a wait and see thing with mccaffrey um he is at a discounted price because of that but i I just don't think the usage is going to be where we're used to it being because i think they might actually get decent quarterback play this year yeah and that, that would be nice to see i think carolina has a lot of good a lot of good receivers that we'll touch on later, but if they can get, you know, Sam Darnold can, you know, be, be as good as we want them to be, that could be a dangerous team. But if you're not going McCaffrey, I think the, the top four guys, top four running backs, uh, these are kind of like your safe, obviously, 8,600 and above, safe pay of plays. If you're not going McCaffrey, between Cook, Henry, Kamara, who, who are you leaning if you want, if you're paying up for running back? Man. Like I said, I like the Tennessee Arizona game, but I think I got to go with Alvin Kamara in this spot. Um, the New Orleans Green Bay game that's that's gonna be a game where every snap is gonna matter. Um, you got a Jameis who we talked about earlier. We do like him, but Sean Payton's smart. He knows that Kamara is still the best player on their team. They don't have Michael Thomas. They are gonna lean on Kamara a lot um, going against. Uh, Green Bay, who's not necessarily great against the run last year, we saw that they were 26 against it. Um, so I do like Kamara there. Um, there's a guy I know we're going to be talking about a little bit who's further down the line um, who I like better. My issue with this slate is I like a lot of the value plays more than the payups because I think we're going to get more value out of them. But I know at the end of the day, you need somebody who can come in, get you those 30 points. And I think out of those other top three, I think Probably Kamara has the best shot there. What about you? You, you never know. If you, you want to leave like $3,000 on the table, you could really make a contrary lineup. But no, I... I go wild. That, it's happened. But yeah, I, I like... I mean, Kamara and Cook are my top two guys. I think I like Cook slightly more. I think he's got a little bit better of a matchup, despite despite the saying that Green Bay was 26th against running backs. Uh, Cincinnati was second worst in the league in yards per carry. We know Dalvin Cook is a guy that can touch the ball uh 25 times a game just on the ground if not more um so I, I think cook gets a lot of work i also i mentioned it with the quarterbacks but i think minnesota is going to get up early i don't think they run away with this game but i think it's kind of a game where they get up early uh they want to milk the clock out and just 
keep giving the ball to Cook and let him get five yards, six yards, eight yards, and just kind of work their way down the field that way. So I think Dalvin Cook's going to have a lot of a lot of usage. Uh, Kamara, like you mentioned, it, it kind of with McCaffrey, it just is he going to get the same same usage that he did last year with Drew Brees slash Taysom Hill um, when Jam- Jameis Winston's the quarterback? And I I think. I mean, I don't think he's going to like fall off completely, but I think it's going to take a while for us to see him get up to that same level that he was last year. So th- this week, I'm probably probably won't play him as much, but I think if he stays around this price or even drops a little bit in the coming weeks, um, gets a you know gets comfortable with Jameis Winston in the backfield, I think that's that's going to be a play. He had six touchdowns in a game last year. I think we forget about that. That is nuts. Yeah, that was ridiculous man who who are some of these uh, like let's look at this mid-range uh after kamara uh jonathan taylor down to uh we'll skip your boy Najee harris but kind of down to joe mixon skipping Najee harris are there any guys there that like scare you anybody that you don't want to play in that range you know one of the guys that is interesting and i think maybe i play him just because of he is coming in a little cheaper um I mean, obviously, you have the big question marks, right? You have Saquon Barkley, who we've already heard isn't going to be playing a full amount. We also have uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, who everybody is crucifying him for not being the next uh, Barry Sanders out of his first year. With, uh, we had such high hopes we had from last year, but I think people are, are leaning too heavily the other way, but again, not necessarily sure we love him. But somebody who I, I really am not sure how I land on is Nick Chubb. I know earlier I was talking about how much I liked um, that the Browns are going to be running the ball, and that but I feel like there's going to be there's going to be a lot of running, which you would think okay that's good, but split between Kareem Hunt and I don't think that there's going to be a lot of big plays. I think it's just going to be kind of these chunk little like three and four yard runs that they're just trying to work the clock out. Um, I don't I don't see Nick Chubb being somebody that I love in my lineups, uh, especially with the Kareem Hunt fa- factor. Um, and just, I think the Browns want this game to go as fast as possible. And so this game as a whole kind of scares me. Yeah. I, I think, I think Nick, Nick Chubb will be a good play, not this week, but in a game where it's going to be back and forth and in a game where they don't need to completely slow the pace down to keep the ball in Mahomes' hands. Uh, if Cleveland puts a lot, a lot of points on the board, you know, you know, Nick Chubb is doing good because, let, I mean, let's face it, last year we were looking at this team who had a great season. Odell Beckham didn't do great. I mean, he was injured. So I guess that's part of the reason why he didn't do great. But, I mean, Jarvis Landry, nothing. It, their wide receivers, nothing. It was all in the back of Chubb and Kareem Hunt. So I think Chubb's, Chubb is a good play uh, in the future. But this week at 7,200, I think you can get, you know, you can drop down. I really like Aaron Jones at 6,800, $400 cheaper. I think that's mm-hmm, such sure. a cheap price tag for him because he was, it's a steal. yeah, he was a top top five or six running back last season. Uh, I know it. What about James Robinson too at sixty four hundred against? I mean, the Houston Texans. That, I talked about that a little bit in my uh, first look video, but I, I am going to be playing James Robinson. Don't get me wrong, but I think this game either goes one of two ways, where it's like Jacksonville gets up fourteen nothing in the first quarter. And it's either let's let, you know, let's let Lawrence, let's see what he can do and just have him throw some deep passes, take some chances to see what he's made of. Or it's going to be, you know, we don't want Lawrence to even take a chance of getting injured. Let's go James Robinson all day. So if the latter is the case, then James Robinson is an absolute steal. 6,400 should be in every single one of your lineups, GPP, cash, definitely in cash, but even in GPP, it's a steal. But, you know, could blow up your in your face. I think he'll carry some ownership. So if the former is a, case and Lawrence is out there up 21 points throwing the ball deep in the fourth quarter I I think Robinson kind of takes a hit so uh let's look at some value running back plays down in the 5,000 range is there any guy that stands out to you that you like yeah I mean in the 5,000 range and if you're talking about like guys who are at specifically 5,400 or 5,500 I mean I know I was just talking about how much I don't like Nick Chubb, but Kareem Hunt, I mean, it, it takes one touchdown or so to get him um, 
really to where he needs to be for his value. Um, Mike Davis is a guy that I like. He's still running back one. I know they signed Wayne Gallman there, so there's been a lot of people kind of moving away from Mike Davis because people already weren't too, too high on him. Um, but again, he's a good, solid dart throw. Damian Harris is tough because I think he's going to be good season long. Don't know how good he's going to be against the Dolphins, per se. Um, I know that makes you happy to hear. But, <laughs> I hope so. Um, I think... Yeah, I think there was a lot of question marks there in that Patriots uh, backfield when these prices came out. And then now that Sonny Michelle is no longer there, um, I think it's it's something that yeah, maybe maybe there is something there if uh, Belichick doesn't want to lean too much on Mac Jones and, and wants to run the ball a little bit more. I think I think Damian Harris could be a solid play. Yeah, I mean, I like, I like the Mike Davis call. I think this game is a potential shootout. Both defenses are kind of kind of below average uh, especially looking at philly this preseason uh, i don't even remember what the score of the patriots eagles game was but it was not close and uh if that is any indicator of how their defense is going to look in the regular season mike davis is going to get a lot of goal line a lot of red zone touches uh at 5400 you know one touchdown in 50 yards is probably like that's getting close to his value so anything over that if you know if he's getting that multiple touchdowns or if he's getting that 100 yard bonus uh obviously that's going to be a great pick yeah, i think there's a lot of cheap running backs that i like um uh, problem is a lot of them are on the same team uh you mentioned uh kareem hunt i i'm not going to play him but along those same lines melvin gordon is at 5300 and javante williams at 4000 uh i i think melvin gordon's going to be the running back one i believe uh i don't know if that's confirmed yet but i would think that's the way they're going to lean but i think javante williams is coming in with a lot of expectations that he kind of takes over the backfield because melvin gordon hasn't really been that great the past couple of years uh it hasn't been that reliable uh there you go you can't can't even find him because he's mixed in with all the other minimum price guys (laughs) right where is he i don't even see him wherever that denver game is but I, yeah, I, I mean, I know we're just gonna keep going. <laughs> he might be all the way at the bottom. We're gonna keep going. Uh, uh, People aren't even gonna want to work this hard to find him. Here he is. Yeah. So look at that beautiful picture. <laughs> so yeah, again, I, I think there's a lot of expectations around him, especially in season long. I mean, I know I picked him up in a couple of best ball lineups because I think he does step into the number one role, and I think they're gonna want to see that sooner or later, especially against the Giants who. Denver has a great defense. They'll hold the Giants to very little points. Uh, and it will be another very slow-moving game, not very high-scoring, but I think both Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams have a chance to put up some decent numbers. Uh, and, uh, again, same same type of thing. Chase Edmonds at 4,600, James Conner 4,500. Uh, we've talked about this game a lot now, but it's going to be high-scoring. It's going to be a shootout. One of them. It's going to be fast. One of them is going to be so good. Yeah, it, and it, it's right. It's who. picking who, and that's why I'm like, like I talked about it again in the first look. But it's, I think Edmonds brings a brings a big play potential. I think he can break out on a big run and kind of break a game open. But James Conner could come in as the running back one. I don't know, I don't know who they are deeming the running back one. But James Conner could come in with 18 touches and you know rack up close to 100 yards and a touchdown and he's just going to be a steal at 4500 so yeah one of, one of them i think is having a big game uh it's picking who do you go 50 50 in exposure on them or do you fade them completely you know that's kind of the call you have to make but i think both of those guys provide a lot of value and kind of open up open up some room if you want to plug in cook or mccaffrey who do they, who they there got you here? go this just in chase met chase edmonds one yeah, that, i mean that's what i saw i just to DraftKings. Hard time believing that. I know he's the guy that was on the team last year, so maybe they've got some trust in him. And James Conner is glass, as you put it so nicely. So maybe that's their theory. But just overall, James Conner has been a better player in his career. So we'll see how it plays out. We'll see. But man, can that guy? Yeah. If you for season long, Chase Edmonds is definitely the play because I did not expect James Conner to play more than six games this season. No way that he plays three in a row. Ever. So, <laughs> there will be something that brings I'm it better. down. I'm better. Let's move over to wide receivers. I'm, I'm going to get angry if we keep talking about that. So with the wide receivers, 
because I know we both know this is where you're going, I would imagine. It's all about stacks, right? And we talked about the quarterbacks Absolutely. that we liked at the beginning. We look at the Millie, Ma- Millie Maker um, history. We see, I see that you have a note here. I'm going to steal your note because I'm the one talking right now. <laughs> that only three Millie Maker winners last year didn't have a stack. And that included uh, quarterbacks like Taysom Hill, Jalen Hurts, and Kirk Cousins. But they did have um, an opposing wide receiver most of the time. So with that, I know a lot of the quarterbacks that we liked are, um, one, Kyler Murray. We liked him. Um, some of the other quarterbacks we liked, I know I liked Russell Wilson. Um, some of the other I liked Mac Jones. I don't think you're going to stack the Patriots in, nope. by any means. Um, Jameis, do you try stacking Callaway? With, what, what are you doing here for wide receivers? Are you paying up, or what, what are you doing? Uh, wide receivers, I'm definitely... I, I don't think I'm paying up too much. I was running a couple scenarios, running a couple lineups. I didn't find myself paying up too much, especially when, I uh, like we we like Kyler Murray a lot. DeAndre Hopkins is at seventy eight hundred, and I think that is milking a lot of your lineup. That's a lot of salary built into two players. Uh, kind of when I was playing around, what I liked doing was stacking. If you're paying up for a quarterback of that caliber, you kind of stack him with a wide receiver two on the team. Luckily for this week, the wide receiver two for the Cardinals is Rondell Moore, and he is minimum price. So, believe you're saying AJ Green's not the wide receiver two. Oh, AJ Green is a wide receiver four <laughs> on that team. Come on, that's, oh, that's I, so bad. Yeah, that's. I mean, but you 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 definitely know, and it could be this week. You definitely know AJ Green's going to come out with a two touchdown hundred yard game at one point this season. And you're going to be mad you didn't take him. So, it, but yeah, so if I'm going Kyler Murray, I'm probably going a cheap guy. But on the flip side, uh, some someone I like is Tannehill for cash games. I think, you know, we kept talking about this game shooting out. I think Tannehill is a good play at 6,500. And then you have two great receivers there and A.J. Brown at 71, Julio Jones at 68 that you can stack them with. But, I mean, yeah, absolutely, you should be stacking. Like Scotty mentioned, uh, only three millimakers didn't include a stack, and that's with Taysom Hill, who plays every position on the field, Jalen Hurts, who obviously has the rushing potential, and then uh, Kirk Cousins, even though he he was stacked with Madison. And then to that point, uh, I I like running it back with with a wide receiver or running back. And when you have a game... You know, as high scoring as Arizona and Tennessee should be, you can easily go Kyler Murray with Rondale Moore and then run it back with Julio Jones or AJ Brown, whoever you like better there. So I think stacking's the way to go. Yeah, it really when you look at it, especially from a GPP kind of standpoint, when the wide receiver pool that you go with gets pretty limited based on who your quarterback is. Um but when you do a stack, you don't have to have all three wide receivers be a stack, right? You don't have to pick your quarterback and then all three wide receivers. Who do you like kind of as a flex play? Is there anybody specifically who you think could fit in with, with any kind of lineup that you create? Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a few guys. I think there's there's some good value uh, right there. LaVisca Chenault Jr. at 5,000 is a guy I think I might have a lot of exposure to. I'm going to be very over the field on him. Uh, I think he's going to be the preferred wide receiver for Trevor Lawrence. Um, DJ Chark might be number one on the depth chart, but there is a lot of a lot of chemistry between Chanel and Lawrence in the preseason, and you know I like that to continue, especially against Houston. Um, so I think he's a guy that you kind of can plug into a lot of lineups as a, just a non correlated play. Um, I, T Higgins at forty seven hundred again, way 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 too cheap. Uh, he should be should be the I think he's the wide receiver one on the team and he's the third price guy. I again Scotty mentioned these these prices came out a month ago, so they've got Jamar Chase up there at forty eight hundred, a hundred dollars more expensive when I mean the, as far as we know, the dude has yet to catch a ball. Uh I don't don't know ever. where that yeah, ever. It was a drafted first round draft pick, top whatever he was, top ten draft pick and has not never catched caught caught a, never caught a ball. But uh so I think T. Higgins is the wide receiver one on a game that will be very pass-heavy for Cincinnati. So I'm going to have a lot of exposure to him. I think the field will, too. I think he's going to be high-owned, but that's some chalk I'm going to be eating. Uh, those are kind of my two favorite plays. I mean, if you want to get a little bit contrarian GPP, 
play Corey Davis. Um, I love Corey Davis. Thank you for bringing him up. Yeah, I think that's sneaky. I'll let you you talk about him. I hate how much I love Corey Davis. Corey Davis is somebody who I have on most of my fantasy team. He's he's the Mac Jones of my wide receivers for this year, for season long, and just something about him getting 100% targeted on every route that he ran in some of his preseason games. I think there was one preseason game where he like ran eight routes and he had eight targets. Uh, that What are you going to do with that? You got to love that. Going against Carolina, I mean, it's Corey Davis. I know we're not necessarily, we've seen kind of what he's going to be. Was voted a captain. Don't know if that means anything. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just... I just feel like that chemistry is there, and especially with the GPP format, or not GP, the PPR format that DraftKings is just, you're going to get a bunch of receptions out of this dude, and you're going to end up with one of those games where he's going to have eight catches, he's going to have 70 yards, maybe he throws in a touchdown there, and I don't see why it couldn't happen against Carolina. They're going to be one of the weaker defenses that they play. They're weak at, um, at the quarterback position, so... I mean, it, it's a good easing in game for Zach Wilson, and if he wants to lean on the guy that he already has a lot of chemistry with, I don't see why that doesn't work. Now, that being said, with the preseason, Elijah Moore didn't play for most of it. We're expected to see him, so that could definitely bring down his numbers um, here. But but also, man, we're looking I, at I Jamison Crowder, questionable. I think he's going to be a game time call. So if I mean, if if Jamison Crowder's not playing, I think he was a reliable guy for the Jets last year. So you have Corey Davis is really the he's only bet on the team. Elijah Moore, rookie. Uh, Keelan Cole, they brought in uh, this year. Denzel Mims had a late surge last year, but I don't think he's going to be anywhere near like a top top wide receiver. So Corey Davis is really the only guy Zach Wilson could be thrown to on that team. Yeah. Michael Pittman's another guy that I like. Um, just kind of pivoting. If we're gonna, I don't think we need to talk too much about the Jets. I don't I think that's just a trap. But Michael just, Pittman. This is a Jets only podcast. That... <laughs> No, 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 no. Um, but no, Michael Pittman, uh, Wentz is going to be starting week one. We know that we're not going to get um, T.Y. Hillen in this game. Paris Campbell isn't a guy that I, I'm too, too worried about, even though, again, Ohio State guy here. Love Paris Campbell. Um, but Michael Pittman, he's he should be a good wide receiver. Based on everything we've seen from him in college, based on all the measurables, everything that we've seen in all of those videos that you see of guys working out kept doing those one-handed catches and stuff like he's he's doing everything that would get you hyped coming into a season we haven't seen it happen on an nfl field yet per se but um going up against the seahawks this week i definitely like the matchup i think it's going to be high scoring if the seahawks or not seahawks if the colts want to stay in it they're going to have to score points and michael Pittman is going to be the wide receiver one at 4100 i think that's a, a good deal as well yeah, I completely agree with T.Y. Hilton out. Uh, let, let's move on to tight end and defense. Wrap this up. Uh, power, power through. Do, do we just yeah? Do we just click Kelsey at eighty three hundred and move on to defense? How how is this working? Uh, I, I I again beating the dead horse over and over and over again. Staying away from Kansas City guys too expensive for me. I like um, some of the other options here. Um, more I know you're you're the UF guy, so I'm gonna save somebody. Down there at the forty four hundred price tag for you, um, but yeah, I I think Kelsey's just going to be a little too expensive. Uh, I agree. This is one of the highest prices he's ever been, and in a game that we've hounded this over and over again, should be slow paced, too expensive for me. But yeah, to your point, Kyle Pitts forty four hundred. Uh, yes, I am a UF guy, and Kyle Pitts is just. He's an athlete. He can play tight end, wide receiver. He can play opposite of Calvin Ridley. Uh, he can play bunched up with, um, uh, why can't I think of the other tight end on this team's name? Hay- Hayden Hurst. There we go. Uh, he can play bunched up with Hayden Hurst. It's just, he's so flexible, and I think he is going to be a great tight end for years to come. I think he's great at this price at 4400 However, I... Uh, fading him season long when I was doing all my best ball drafts and my season long fantasy drafts it was just I did not want any part of Kyle Pitts I think he's there I mean they're projecting him as like a top three tight end and I think he has the potential to be there you know 
in next year or the year after, but I think it's too early for us to be calling him, you know, a top three tight end. But in, until he gets to that top three price, until he matches Hawkinson there at 4,900, I, I mean, I like his price right now. Yeah, for sure. And I think if we're going to wrap this up um, kind of quickly, a guy I, I think we both like is Tanyan going against uh, the Saints defense. That's definitely something that is going to be definitely – uh, something that we can take advantage of. Um, I also like Johnny Smith if he's going to be the guy um, because what we've seen in past history is that rookie quarterbacks like to lean on their tight ends a little bit. Um, and so if you have Mac Jones, again, I mean, the defense very, very good, but if um, we could see a lot of just kind of quick uh, yardage plays for Johnny Smith where he just racks up a lot of receptions, doesn't necessarily do a lot with it, but again, at 4,100, if you get five catches out of him for about 30 or 40 yards, that's, that's a not a bad showing. You're not scared of him being paired with Hunter Henry? I mean, Hunter Henry's been banged up a little bit coming into the season. I think it's going to be um, Johnny Smith as, as the lead guy there. Um, something I don't like, though, um, is the fact that Hunter Henry is, is a good quarterback, and it's a, it's a strong defense at Miami. But I think Johnny Smith provides more athleticism, some, just a, a better look. Um, and so... I like that. Um, Gerald Everett, somebody who I like season long, but so I, I, w- I want to get that in early. Gerald Everett, don't sleep on him. But going up against Darius Leonard in that defense, we're, we're, we're fading him as well. All right, well, let's go. Let's cover defense real quick, and uh, maybe we can try to build a lineup and build our f- first week one hands down DFS lineup. Uh, defense, uh, I like the Dolphins. Shocker, I know. But I, I think they can put a lot of pressure on the Patriots, who didn't score a lot of points last year. Still don't think they will this year with Mac Jones. Uh, I think the Broncos are a good play. I think if you're trying to punt, uh, Falcons are a good punt because I don't think Jalen Jalen Hurts is the real deal. And I think you know two thousand minimum price. This game is projected to score a lot of points, but if you think Jalen Hurts can't get it done, I don't think Miles Sanders can either. So I think Falcons are. A potential play there at two thousand. Any any teams stand out to you? Man, I am a big, big, big Jalen Hurts truther, so I, I I'm not following the punt there on the Falcons, but oh, I man. do like I'm sorry the Charger. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I mean, I just made a trade for him in one of my fantasy leagues. Maybe I'm biased, but I also had him last season, and I had that four touchdown game put me into the playoffs. So maybe I'm just trying to be a little loyal to my guys. You know, you got to feel that <laughs> out, and so. The Chargers, though, I do like them. I know you're not as big on the Chargers this week as I am. I think they're a defense I, I, that... I, I, I'm scared of Ryan Fitzpatrick, to be honest. I mean, that's the thing. You never know what you're going to get out of them. Um, but they have a strong defensive line. They have Derwin James, who's coming back finally after it seems like he's never been able, able to actually have a uh, consecutive stretch of games as well. Um, but... I like the defense. If they're healthy, if they're at full strength, they're a pretty strong defense. Washington football team isn't going to be a team that we're too, too afraid of, especially they just lost uh, Curtis Samuel, who looks like he's going to be going down as well. So that's another weapon that uh, Fitzmagic is going to be without. Um, And so we'll have to see if the magic is on week one, but I think I like the Chargers here at 3,100 to um, take advantage of that. And then also the Vikings right underneath them. Cincinnati, I know we've talked about them a little bit, but their offensive line is so bad. I think they're going to get so many sacks on Joe Burrow or at least pressures. Um, and so they, they could be seeing uh, a lot of points there by just making it like making life hard for Joe Burrow. All right. Let, let, let's do this. Let's make our week one lineup. This will be the hands down official lineup. Uh, this is no no pre planning going into this. We're just gonna based on what no we idea. talked this about. This is gonna go. How? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think we can start. What the? Depending on if you want to go high priced or value at QB, I think we both really like Kyler Murray. Uh, I think he's. In there. Yeah, I think Kyler Murray's a great play, and then you know we let's find a stack for Murray. Um, we talked about how much you know how dependable it is to kind of stack and then run it back. So are we going Hopkins? Are we going Rondale Moore? Are we loving loving AJ AJ Green? What, what do you think in there? I like I like the Chase Edmonds and the Rondale Moore stack. 
is personally okay. if, if I'm going to be attacking the, the Cardinals, I think that's what I like. But I'm open to suggestions. So I mean, I I like Chase Edmonds as well. So let, let's get Chase Edmonds in there. Let's get Rondale Moore in there. Uh, I got to type to find these guys. <laughs> And that's those are two really cheap guys, Edmonds and Rondell Moore, forty six and three thousand. That leaves us a lot of room with, uh, you know, if we want to bring it back on Tennessee. Uh, do you, are are you an AJ Brown stand or a Julio Jones stand this year? Man, that's tough. I think season long AJ Brown, uh, but I think for this game I like Julio Jones better just because we don't know with the injury of AJ Brown. But again, up to up to what, suggestions. What? Let's get Julio Jones in there. I mean, I'm indifferent to them. I agree. I think AJ Brown is going to be going to have more points on the season, but you know, it's week one. It's really anyone's week. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, running back. Who are, who are we looking at running back? We you know we have a pretty cheap play. We probably want someone that that's you know has a, provides a little bit more a higher floor as well as a higher ceiling. Uh, who do you like here? I really like James Robinson. I know we also like Aaron Jones. So I'd be happy with either of those two guys and our second running back spot. I, I'm leaning Jones a bit there. Just not not too sure about Jacksonville how they're going to handle uh, handle being. I mean, I mean we can depending on how our flex works or how our money's looking, we could probably plug in James Robinson. In fact, let, let's do that. Why don't we plug in James Robinson in our flex also, just to get both of those guys. That provides us two relatively high floor running backs and I, I think Aaron Jones has a big ceiling uh James Robinson potentially also okay. um, do you want to go do you want to go defense or do you want to finish off the wide receiver and tight let's, end first? let's go defense and see what we're looking at for remaining salary gotcha so defense was there somebody that we both agreed on I know we I think we both like the Broncos this week but yeah is this an area where you want to punt I, no, I, I think I think the Broncos are a good play. I think they can get a lot of intercept or not a lot of interceptions, but I think they can intercept Daniel Jones once, maybe twice. They should be able to get a lot some pressure on him. Uh, so I think that's a good play, and you know they're they're you're not breaking the bank on the defense there. It leaves us a lot of room on wide receiver and tight end. Gotcha. So do we want to do tight end first and then see what we got left on the money wise for wide receiver, or do you just yeah, want to? Let's do that. Okay, and then so our tight end. Who are we feeling for our tight end this week? Uh, you know, we we both like Tanyan. Uh, I really like Kyle Pitts. I think they're in that good range. I didn't really talk about Hawkinson too much, but I think yeah, I went uh, I wouldn't play him this week. But I think he's going to be one of the only reliable pass catchers on Detroit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I'd say either Tanyan or Pitts. I don't know if you are leaning one way or the other. I think I lean Pitts. Just because I think I like the matchup better, um, but yeah. again, the rookie tight end—it's kind of tough to to bank on that week one. But I think I think I'm leaning Pitts. Yeah, let's go Pitts and Tanya. We, you know, we already have Aaron Jones in there. And not not that like playing a tight end and running back on the same team is killing you, but you know, it just kind of limits the, your upside. So I think that's a good play. And then we got 7,100 spare at wide receiver. Uh, it's kind of AJ risky Brown just staring us down <laughs> kind of risky double <laughs> double stack in aj brown uh do we maybe go Thielen, Lockett? um obviously dk metcalf has huge ceiling but Lockett can get ton- tons of receptions um it's kind of leaves us in a weird range where we already have already have Julio jones don't really need to go aj brown um i mean we, we can maybe we we can maybe uh, take a little ch- cheaper of a receiver and upgrade James Robinson to someone in the seven thousand range, or you know maybe even I I don't know. Do we want to do? I know T Higgins was a guy that we both liked, or even Lavisca Chanel yeah. was a guy. Do we want? Do we want to do T, either of those two? I think T Higgins is way too cheap, so I I, I say we plug in T Higgins. Um, and just hey, we leave that three thousand on the table like we said you would. <laughs> it's definitely a play. I don't know if it's the right one, but it is a play. No, but I think with that amount of money, we could upgrade James Robinson to a. Uh, can we fit Kamara in there? Kamara. Yeah. Uh, let's see how that math works. Oh, plenty, plenty of room. Yeah. So we could get either one of those two guys. I think we we both agree on Kamara. So I think that's a solid lineup. You've got the. There you go. Kyler Murray with Chase Edmonds, Rondale Moore bringing it back with Julio Jones. Then you kind of have the uh, Alvin Kamara, you know, basically two great running backs in there. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think the Aaron Jones Alvin Kamara matchup in the same game. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a good lineup. So we'll, we'll, well there say you go. there's our official hands down DFS week one lineup. Uh, I appreciate everyone watching or listening. If you're listening to this, um, please uh, feel free to subscribe, like this video. We're gonna be doing this every week. Have a couple videos out. Have some prize picks, picks, uh, and then our finally conclude with a breakdown of the entire slate. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please let us know in the comments. We'd be happy to kind of change up our schedule or touch on anything you want to touch on. And, you know, we're really flexible. So just we'd love some feedback. Any concluding thoughts, Scotty? No, man, just excited that football is here. Um, feel good about this lineup. I'm excited about watching it. Um, hopefully we've been, we, we took a pretty hard stance going against the MVP of the league. Um, with the Kansas City Chiefs, and <laughs> so starting the season off bold, I I, I feel good about it, but um, definitely could backfire week one. So, but I'm gonna put that's where I'm gonna put my money. Um, as you guys can see with our hands down lineup here, that we'll we'll be entering into some contests as well. Um, so just know that we're gonna follow through on what we say. Um, and this nothing we say though is guaranteed to to make money. But <laughs> hey. You got to have a stance. If it was guaranteed to make money, you know, I would not be working. <laughs> we would not have our nine to five for sure. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, again, get, please subscribe, like, give us a follow on Twitter at HandsDownDFS. And uh, we'll catch you guys in week two. See you.